my favorite and least favorite mountain dog training programs. Let's get into it. All right, guys, a question I got on my Instagram was, Chris, hey man, what's your favorite mountain dog programs? On the flip side of that, what are your least favorite? And let me start by saying this, none of them are bad. <laughs> so just though, even though it may pl place last in my mind, I've done at this point all 39 of John's programs and I've done all the manuals that I helped co-write and none of them are bad. So let's start there. You could do any one of these and I'm telling you, you will love it because it's good. It's enjoyable, it's well written, it's well thought out, it's programmed with volume and intensity and it weighs and it's just set up really, really well for progress and growth. And plus it just keeps, it's fun, it's interesting. I'm telling you like, what, what initially drew me to Mountain Dog programming was, you know, John had posted one of the workouts him and Dave did on Teen Nation, God, years ago in 2010. And I just finished this long bout of just brutality with me and three of my other training partners where we just go in and try to just literally beat the piss out of each other for two hours every day, six days a week. And my body was just hammered. And, you know, two of my training partners peeled and they moved and then just left my other buddy, Ryan and I, and, you know, I was a big T Nation guy at the time and I responded on the forums and I just read through and I saw, you know, I didn't know who John was at the time and he posted a chest and shoulder workout that him and Dave Tate did. And I was like, huh, that looks fun. Let's try that on Monday. And Ryan was like, sure, man, that's fun. It absolutely smoked us. But on the flip side of that, feeling smoked, but I didn't feel like my joints were beat to shit or my central nervous system was trashed. So then he had posted a leg one the next week. We tried it. Guess what? Same feeling. Man, my legs are cooked, but I feel incredible. So it led me to reaching out to him and say, hey, like, I really love these two workouts you posted on Teen Nation. Like, how much would it cost for you to take over my training? Fast forward to now. <laughs> I just skipped a big chunk there. But from workout one, day one, I loved it. And it clicked with me. And that's why John and I think always got along because he took the science, but he also mixed in enough meathead to keep me happy, right? And at the time I was big into squatting, benching and deadlifting, and all those were in there. So we did a lot of rack pulls, we did deadlifts with chains, we did squats, squats with chains. He took away the flat bar, which I was fine with, and we did incline barbell and heavy incline dumbbell. So at the totality of it all, that's why him and I always messed really well, is our training philosophies and thoughts aligned a lot. And then on the, flip, on the flip side, he taught me a lot of things that I had no clue about how to put hamstrings before quads and partials on hamstrings and really learning to maximize every bit of the exercise sequence that we do within a workout. So let's get to the direct question. Let's start with my favorite. And all day long, if you ask me, Team Universe is my absolute favorite. And I love it for a lot of reasons. It's, it's, a, it's so fun. It has back twice a week, which I always needed. <laughs> but then within that program, it has his diet, his supplements, his cardio, how he feel, training notes on there, thoroughly laid out like a journal. So not only do you get to do the exact training program that turned him pro, but you get to see what he did with his diet, see what he did with his supplements, see what he did with his cardio. And to me, like that was so cool to kind of almost get inside of his mind even more and have all those thoughts on paper for you to read and reflect on. Because when I did that program the first time, I was in the all season and I asked him, I said, is this a good program to run the all season? And that's where I learned like any of his programs can be ran pre-contest or all season. The point of training is to grow muscle or at the very end of a prep, maintain muscle. So to knock that question out of the part of, oh man, well, should you do this one in a prep? And it doesn't matter. So all day long, number one to me always will be Team Universe. I just love it. Number two, and I don't know if it's because of the name it was the first program I did after I went and trained with him in person, but Creeping Death One. That is the most sold program we've ever had on the whole website. It's <laughs> like the name describes, Creeping Death. I think the intro note goes something like this, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm gonna hit you over the face with a bat over and over and over again. I'm not waving intensity, I'm not waving volume. Get ready. And that's what I think I loved about it, right? Is the challenge. Like, I remember getting home and he was like, All right, you're ready for Creeping Death. And I was like, Okay, hell yeah. At that time, only four other people had it, and they were all pros and Dave Tate. So I felt like I was in like an elite company. So again, I'm super nostalgic. So, you know, with Team U, that's where he turned pro and had all those notes. Well, with Creeping Death One, like that's the one where I felt like feel like he took the training wheels off of me and said, "Man, you're ready to be brutalized. You can take this." And a lot of the programs that he never released, 
is because the insanity within those programs, most people who bought our programs weren't ready prepare, or prepared for mentally, or they weren't there in their training life and never wanted to be. So although I know a lot of you have questions about Chris, about what about the unreleased programs, and just know <laughs> it's a whole new level of sadistic. And that's why, again, that's why him and I bonded so well. It's because I did those programs and asked for more. So, all right, number three, to wrap this up of the best. And I just told you I was super nostalgic, and it's program number one. And that's 12 weeks pain and suffering. And, you know, <laughs> I'll try to keep it together with this. Like, that program to me, he titled it 12 Weeks of Pain and Suffering for Chris the Insane. And, I, and, and I, to this day, like, it means something to me because, man, he, he had helped so many people with training. And I told him in my questionnaire and I filled out, I was like, I don't give an absolute fuck how bad it hurts. Like, I need to grow, I need to get better, I need to learn. So show me the way. And, you know, it's one of those things, like, from that moment, I feel like he always saw something in me. And that program set the foundation for getting to go train with him for building from the ground up, because at that time I was small, it taught me how to become a bodybuilder. I thought I knew what it was like to be a bodybuilder, how to train right, and I had the intensity portion right, but I didn't have the exercise sequencing, the ordering, the waving of the volume, like how to be intelligent with training. I lacked that in that moment of my early career of being a bodybuilder and being a trainer, and he taught me that through that program. So. I still to this day go back to it. And I know a lot of people think, oh man, that's probably outdated because I think it was, again, written in 2010. And to me, that, that doesn't matter. That, that and any of our programs are timeless because what it does is it challenges you, it trashes the muscle, and it forces it to grow in a smart way. So again, those are my top three. Team Universe, Creeping Death 1, 12 Week Pain and Suffering. The rest of them are great. I, I mean. Honorable mention, Arnold Prep, the Arnold Prep he had, that program was awesome. The Devourer, incredible. Um, I mean, I could go one. With, with <laughs> Muscular Demolition was a fun one that was never released. I will share a fun fact with that. Muscular Demolition, to finish every single back day, it was 20 plus rep chain deadlifts, and they were absolute hell. That program was never released because I think that singular reason is it was just straight to the face, just getting hammered. Chain squats, chain deadlifts every week. It tested me and I loved it. All right, now, my least favorite, and this is more categorically, all the programs that were push-pull legs, for me, is just gonna fall to the bottom of the barrel because I'm not a push-pull legs guy. I need an arm day. For my arms to be bigger and better, I need an arm day and he knew that as well as I, I did. Um, it was a nice mix-up. All those programs are extremely well-written. So just to name a couple of those, Avalanche, Colossus, Grandmaster, all those are Aries, all those are gonna be push-pull legs. And for me, I, I need an arm day. So I did all those, I enjoyed them, but for me, I need an arm day. So I'll probably put those towards the bottom third of the list. I haven't redone most of those only for that, for that sole reason. But if I'm speaking specifically about my least favorites, and I'll explain why, I, I am not a high-frequency trainer. So what does that mean? If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I like to come in here and like to rage and take sets to failure, pass failure, intensity techniques. And with any of our higher frequencies, those are the MD 2.0, so 2.0 programs, you have to train a body part three to four times a week. And that's just not for me. I liked them, I enjoyed them, and in the moment I had a ton of fun with them, but I didn't get optimal progress off of it. And to me, that's, like, that's one of the reasons why I train is I like to see progress. And on the other side, what I like even more than progress is having fun in the gym. And that's the reason I really love his old school 1.0 programs the best, is because it's just straight getting punched in the face over and over and over again. And occasionally you have a pump day thrown in there and that's a little bit more back off. But even then, like we were doing customized pump days for me and they were not what he wrote in there as pump. <laughs> they were 30 to 40 sets of back. It was wild, but fun. So. The takeaway here, guys, my least favorite all day long are gonna be things like Taskmaster, the Sentinel, Onslaught. Those three are probably my least favorite, and that's only because it's a high frequency training model, and it's just not for me. Does it suit how I love to train? On the full side of that, I didn't grow my best off of that. And I probably didn't grow my best off of it because I was, 
would just get mad at the workouts and take things to failure, <laughs> my recovery was shit. So you have to find a program and training style that you're able to do, in my mind, year round and have fun at it. Because that's what brings me back in here, right? Like, I absolutely love training. Outside of hanging out with my wife, it's the most fun I have all day. And to me, like, I want to be fired up to come in here and lift weights. And that is how I formulate my workouts. Will they always be what I would consider like probably maximally optimal according to the scientists? Probably not. But the difference between me and that group is they theorize training and I actually apply it. So there you have it guys, my top three and my bottom three of Mountain Dog Training Programs. If you have any other questions, post in the comments below. I'm happy to talk about this. I will talk about John Meadows' program all day long because I love it. This what turned me into a true bodybuilder and built the foundation of the muscle that you see today. So if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, Curtis TV.